It's been four years now since the pandemic shut down daycares. Many didn't survive. The providers that did are still struggling to bounce back, especially after relief money recently expired. WMR2 News Elizabeth Worthington has an in focus look. So you guys can sit there right where you are. Okay? It's a child care provider's dream. The ability to just focus on teaching and playing. Get the green one and then the blue one. Without having to worry about funding about keeping the lights on. But a child care provider's reality sounds more like this. We're going to be getting this amount from the parents. We're going to have to raise this much through grants. We're going to have to be able to raise this much through fundraising. Have I talked about taking care of the children yet? No, I haven't. All I've talked about is trying to braid funds together in order to do the job. Can you reach it? Hillary Roberts King took over as executive director for downtown Baltimore child care right in the middle of the pandemic. It was desperate. It was desperate. Those were some pretty dark days. But she's worked in the child care industry for years, so she knew before that darkness, it wasn't even that bright. Before the pandemic, all of child care was living on razor thin margins. So going forward, we cannot aspire to go back to what the situation was before COVID. Parents and providers were not making ends meet. Funding from the American Rescue Plan kept some providers hanging on during COVID, but not all were so lucky. Roberts King spent all the money on her employees. That federal funding dried up in the fall. Now places like DBCC are turning to partnerships, philanthropy, and raising tuition to make up for the loss. It's a delicate balance, making tuition high enough to keep wages competitive, but low enough so parents can still afford to stay. In order for this industry to support every other industry in Maryland, we cannot rely on it being funded through low wages and parents who are at the very beginning of their earning potential. It's an economic problem. Maryland is trying to solve part of the problem. The state's 2021 landmark education reform aims to provide state funded pre-K to all three and four year olds from low income families. The initiative calls for a mixed delivery system, meaning it'll use both private and public providers to help take on the additional kids. The state is offering pre-K expansion grants to providers until now. Downtown Baltimore child care hasn't been eligible for those grants because of a teacher certification requirement. Should we put the worms in? Yeah! Evelyn Williams has worked here for 40 years. She's a master's level pre-K teacher, but she just never pursued a Maryland State Department of Education teaching license. To get certified now, she'd have to leave her job and become a student teacher. Williams testified in front of both the House and the Senate, explaining why this requirement placed, quote, an undue burden on teachers. Her testimony must have been compelling. A bill that would recognize Evelyn and all the teachers at DBCC as qualified pre-K teachers passed in both chambers. Anything that we can do to make the funding smooth mm -hmm. so that we can focus on operations would be a, a step in the right direction. Child care is infrastructure. It's like roads, it's like bridges, it's like electricity. No one can get to work without us. In Baltimore, Elizabeth Worthington, WMAR 2 News.